Hello and welcome to part 3 of 4. In this we will be covering unit 1 and the second half of unit 1, part 2 of 2. So in unit 1 we covered control flow, which are loops and conditionals. These are for statements, while statements, and if else clauses. We covered the basic C program structure, which includes functions such as the main function and libraries. We covered functions and how to declare them, an example of which being void f1 int x int y int z. And we covered the workflow, how to edit, compile, and run your code. This is primarily done through GCC. For loops and while loops are two kinds of loops. These will let us write out some code and let us loop over them. By Once we hit the last line, we'll be able to loop back to the first line and continue from there. If else statements give us conditional clauses. If we want something to run on an if, we can write that. If we don't want it to run on an if, we can write a statement under an else. Everything else we will see as we write code and it will become more clear there. Let's go over some possible exam questions. How do we declare a double variable called w with a value of 2.15? Let's go over this. So we, we first read the word double, and we know that will be our data type. Next, we know the name. Next, we need to know the name of the variable. Well, that we can see with w. The variable is called w, so we'll write a w. So we have double w equal, on the right hand side of this equal sign, we'll have our value. Our value is 2.15. We'll need a semicolon to finish off this line, and we have created our, and we have declared a double variable called w with a value of 2.15. How do we declare a function called loop madness that takes in two input parameters, x and y, which are both integers, and returns a double? This is not asking you to write out the function, because we don't know what this function does. What does it do with x and y, and how does it convert it into a double? But it does say we just need to declare this function. To declare this function, we need to first write out the return type, which is double. Then we need to know the name of the function. Well, that's loop madness. And then we open it up with a parentheses. Here we put our input variables, which are int x, because both of these parameters are integers. And then we just end it with a semicolon. And that is how we declare a function. Notice that we didn't declare what happens in this function, because we don't need to care about that. We are only focusing on declaring the function, such that everyone knows these are the inputs, and it will give us a double. The inputs being two integers, x and y, and it will give us a double. What are the three parts we find in the declaration of a for loop? We open it up with parentheses, and we will have our first, which is the variable declaration. An example of variable declaration would be int x. Then we will have a semicolon to separate a declaration from the next statement. The next part of our statement is the conditional. And this can be something that tests our variables, such as x is less than 10. We'll need a semicolon to separate out the next. And the last step is our increment. And this can be something such as x plus plus. We will then close this off with parentheses, and our for loop has been declared. What do we do when we get a compiler error? Well, a good sense is to Google it. You'll find many online resources on how to solve common errors. There are many kinds of compiler errors, and that will be dependent upon your code. Thanks for watching this video. In the next video, we will be covering a review question to make sure you have understood all these concepts.